Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the various kinds of adapters and things that you can put on the front, on the front of lenses or on the back of lenses. And I have to say, a disclaimer right up front, uh, I really don't like doing that. But even so, I know that you'll want to try it, and certainly I did and have virtually almost every kind of uh, close-up lens and adapter you could possibly have in an attempt to find something that was really superior to the lenses themselves, but I never did find that. So at least we should talk about it. So let's talk about close-up adapters and what are called diopters. Close-up lenses, close-up adapters, are lenses that screw on the front of your lens to give them greater magnification. And there, there are two general types. The single lens, like magnifying glass adapters, one piece of glass, are dirt cheap on eBay, and they are totally worthless. I have a whole small, thank God, pile of them. Uh, they simply degrade your lens. End of story. Sure, you get a photo, but suddenly it's a photo that's taken with one of the worst lenses in the world. No matter how good the lens is you're screwing on the adapter to, and you'll have all kinds of color fringing and so on. What are better than just magnifying glasses are what are called acromat diopters. Now these are highly corrected two element lenses that, that enable the lens to focus more closely on small objects. Nikon even made some fine adopters, I mean fine diopters for a while, but they've been discontinued but still turn up on eBay. And, I have all of the Nikon diopters and I've tried them. They are okay at best, literally just okay, but not good enough for me to use them regularly or really ever. But why do these things exist? Well, the simple answer is just to save money over having to purchase different lenses to stretch or to stretch the use of any single lens beyond what it was designed for. And the results show this. I can think of no other reason. I even have the highly thought of Canon Acromats, and they're really no better. And the single glass add-on lenses that I spoke of earlier are only good as paperweights. Now, let's talk about um, extensions and close-up diopters and so forth. Now, what do all of these things I'm talking about have in common? Well, as mentioned, they're devices that fit on the front or back of our lens to give it more magnification or something. Many of them are manu manufactured in an attempt to bring macro lenses that have less than a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio up to that standard one-to-one. One-to-one -one just simply means that the size of the subject you're looking at is the same size on the sensor itself. Now, it's no secret that macro shooters prefer a lens that can reach one-to-one. -one. As I mentioned, meaning the size of the image on your sensor is the same as that of the subject itself. Very few fine macro lenses can do this. It's amazing that this is true. They can't do it without help, and helping them with, with add-ons to get to one-to-one, -to -one, again, this is just an opinion. It's really not much help at all. Now, I own almost all of them, and I have tried each of them, it would be more to correct to say that I've tried to try them and have been fairly disgusted at every turn with the results. Look, I know that there's some maestros out there that are going to say, oh, well, I use them all the time. Be my guest is all I can say. You probably can get good results with them. I'm looking for a certain kind of result that doesn't involve tampering with the native lens that I'm using by putting something on the front or back of it. That's just me. So I have little to nothing positive to say about these add-ons except if the lens manufacturer had wanted this kind of enhancement, they would have included it. And some lenses do. Some lenses have a separate close-up um, lens to screw on the front of it. They actually work pretty well. I have a couple of them that do this, especially some Leica, Leica lenses. So anyway, a better way to say, say this is that I have never seen any of these devices that improve the quality of a lens. And I, obviously I've looked for it because I spent all that money trying to get to that magic land. Invariably, they degrade the lens quality and it's obvious 
for you to you just try it out and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I mean, the lenses that I like and that I buy are carefully made and they're balanced to the nth degree just to make them as good as they are right out of the box. To add on something else is like throwing a piece of lead on a scale, on a scale that's perfectly balanced. It, it's just suddenly unbalanced. Sure, you know, I've bought these things because I'm the kind of person who has to see for myself the effect of these things, thinking that perhaps I could fiddle with them into being worthwhile, that somehow I would master them. But in this case, it didn't happen. My opinion is that you are much better off using a lens just as it is, instead of trying to make it perform beyond its reach. Sure, I think I mentioned before, you'll get photos, but something precious is lost, at least in my experience. Perhaps you won't see this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these here, but I will go over some of the basics just so you know. Now let's talk about extension tubes. Extension tubes are just that, hollow tubes that are mounted at the back of a lens to make them high powered. A 200 millimeter lens is just a lens with a built-in extension tube, but it is a tube that was factored into the actual lens design from the get-go and very carefully balanced. It can be said in defense of extension tubes that they, they do not mess with the quality of the lens because they contain no lens elements themselves and that they're only just an extension. Uh, you know, that's, not, that's a half-truth. It's not, not really true. The long and short of that argument is that extension tubes, as I mentioned earlier, throw a lens out of balance, just as add-on close-up lenses do. The fact that there's no glass added on doesn't make a difference. The, the result, once again, is a somewhat degraded image. Maybe you can't tell the difference and it doesn't matter to you, then use them. An extension tube added to a lens to bring it to 200 millimeters is not the same as a 200 mil millimeter lens with built-in extension. You know, try it out for yourself. They're not too expensive. The sad part is that before I could try it for myself, I had to go and buy these things and I got all of them I could find. And yes, they did work, but I never used them, not even ever. I've been there, done that, and it was not nice. Um, now there's another another whole kind of add-on called teleconverters. Now teleconverters actually add glass to the lens that you have. And uh, that's to me makes things even worse. Teleconverters are lenses that are added to the back of a normal lens to increase their reach, to add magnification and reach. For instance, a two times teleconverter will double the reach of a lens turning a 100 millimeter lens into a 200 millimeter lens and so on. Nikon has produced uh, a number of t teleconverters, mostly 1.4 times magnification, 1.7 and two times sizes. And I have them all. Like the other types of adapters, of course they work. But th the question to ask is how well? My answer is not well not if you like quality photos. I have pretty much all of them. I have the TC17E2 1.7, the TC14E 1.4X, the TC20E 2X, and even the new TC20E 3 two times teleconverters from Nikon. So even recently I fell into the hype of thinking, well, God, maybe they finally made one that's just incredible, but it, it's nice, it's better but it's not incredible. I mean, the most recent Nikon TC20E 3 2 times teleconverter is better than the rest, but still not good enough for me. It's not ready for prime time. And the sole use of, of these is to save you from having to buy a 400 millimeter or higher magnification quality telephoto lenses, which, which really are expensive. I don't blame you who try, uh, and I will use them in a pinch, but um, these big lenses actually do cost a fortune, five to ten thousand bucks. So I'm very grateful that I'm a macro shooter. So if you must have added reach, try them out. But I, I wager that you will be disappointed 
or at least end up like I do, holding your nose. I just ask myself, is there any lens that I have I would want a teleconverter on? And the answer comes up like the magic eight ball, no. So I apologize to adapter fans for my opinion, which is, which is, which is all it is. It's just, it's just how, my take on it. I don't like them and I don't use them.